Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, hi, welcome. I'm Tanelia. So glad to have you here with me today. In today's video, we're going to be doing something that I have never done before and I am extremely excited. I'm going to be doing my first ever Sephora haul and try on. If you're new to my channel and you haven't been following me up until now, I usually only shop Ulta. One, because I have an Ulta car, but also because Sephora is like more luxury and you know, up until this year, I wasn't really interested in trying luxury and high-end brands. I try to be as cruelty free as I possibly can and as we know a lot of luxury and high-end products are not cruelty free and they do do animal testing which makes it a little bit more difficult to test out products you know on the high-end luxury level but there have been some brands that I've been eyeing lately like Patrick Ta I grabbed one of the little cream powder duos I'm very very excited about this this haul was a birthday gift from my husband I turned 46 on March 12th I cannot believe it I am almost 50 years old, four years away from 50, 46 years old. But I have pretty much a full face of products here. Whatever I am missing, whichever step I do not have, I will just pull from my project empties. I'm, I'm currently working through some things, but I have about 90% of a full face here in front of me. I'm also at 3,815 watch time hours. Those of you that are trying to reach monetization and trying to get into the partner program, as you guys know, you have to get 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch time hours to get there. And I am less than 200 watch time hours away. And I just want to say thank you guys for watching my content and for being here. I know that there are a lot of channels out there that you can choose from. And the fact that you take time out of your schedule at all to watch anything on my channel, I just, I really, really appreciate it. I wouldn't be here 3,000 815 watch time hours, less than 200 watch time hours away from my goal if it wasn't for you guys. So once again, thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to prime. I do not have a primer from Sephora. I'm just going to be using one for my project empties. This is one Believe Beauty. Believe Beauty is the Dollar General in-house brand. It's exclusive and all the products are $5 or less and everything is pretty amazing. This is the Pretty and Primed Stay Put Makeup Primer. I think I've got about maybe this much left. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this on real quick. I like the overall finish of this one. It's very moisturizing and it has a bit of a glow and it does blur a little bit. The only issue is I have oily skin and this just does not mattify or control oil. So if I'm going to be using this for an entire day, I usually use a mattifying primer with it. But the finish, the overall finish of this primer, I mean for $5 is really, really nice. So do any of you guys feel the same way about going into an actual Sephora haul to shop where you walk in the store and as soon as you walk in, you are bombarded by an employee who's just asking you all these questions and then is literally following you around in your face pretty much the entire time. You can't just walk around and just relax and calmly enjoy the experience. That drives me nuts. That's also one of the reasons why I found myself shopping at Ulta more. When you walk into an Ulta store, they ask you, can they help you? But when you say, no, I'm just looking around, they don't bother you again. And so far, I swear to God, they're constantly in your face. Are they on commission? Do they have to get like a certain amount of sales or something? I literally cannot stand for an employee to constantly be in my face asking me every five minutes if I need something you're know, trying to push a certain product or something trust me if I need something if I have a question about a product I will ask if an employee and it doesn't make a difference where it is if a salesperson is coming in my face and they're constantly just in my face I'm gonna walk out that that establishment without having bought anything because I do not like it when someone's in my face I like to be able to shop in peace and then ask questions when I'm ready to. At least when you're shopping online, you don't have to worry about somebody being in your face all the time. So that's nice. All right, so I bought all three of the Patrick Star One Size Beauty face products. I've got the Beauty Balm, I bought the Butter Concealer, and I also bought the Setting Powder. I got it in Translucent. They had like a little mini of the setting powder so I went ahead and got that. There's a travel size mini of a product that costs a little bit more. I'll get that first because the last thing I want is to drop the big bucks on the full size only for it not to work for me the way that I need to. So I like when I have a little mini but we're going to be trying all of these. The shade that I got is medium dark too. This is for a warm golden undertone. This looks like it's going to be a really good match. I don't know what it is but the last couple of times I have bought foundation line, the kimchi one and the coasters. I have just been sucking at picking my shade and I picked it way too light. But this looks like it's going to work. This is the Turn Up the Base BB Cream from One Size. And it says that it has a kind of a semi 
matte satin matte finish when you apply it it's supposed to have like this marshmallow velvety texture that just looks seamless and supposed to help smooth out texture it's supposed to blur so interested in seeing if it actually does any of that i do like the way that this bottle is made it's the way that the top of this bottle is made is unique it's unusual usually whenever you get it a product it's in the middle this one's off to the side i'm wondering if it's so that way the product will fall this way and it would be easier to get the product out as you can see i have not used yet so let me go ahead and take the little seal off the top Ooh, that's kind of thick for a beauty bomb that definitely blended right into my skin it looks like it's going to have a decent amount of coverage i'm going to take a little bit on my elf sponge that might be too much that should definitely be enough for my entire face kind of spread that around before i start blending it in yeah i definitely applied a little bit too much thankfully this little sponge does soak up a little bit of the product i have been wanting to try patrick star for a while i've heard so many good things about his base products especially about the concealer and the setting powder all right that's giving a giving me a nice amount of coverage and that looks really really good yeah that looks very skin like I'm not seeing like a whole ton of blurring, but it actually looks really, really good. I am impressed by the finish. It just blended right into my skin and it literally looks like skin. It does not look like I have foundation on top of my skin. And this is a good shade match. This is really nice. I, I am happy. The texture definitely feels kind of marshmallowy, kind of velvety. It's very nice. So far, so good. So now for the Turn Up the Base Butter Silk Concealer, I got this in medium five supposed to be medium warm golden undertones it says that it is a medium to full coverage and it's just supposed to give you this like buttery silky kind of smooth look underneath your eyes that's what the doe foot looks like it has like a nice little curve in it i usually use a color corrector this is probably about half a shade lighter than i normally would have gone but it will definitely give me some brightness that is for sure i usually like to use a color corrector but whenever i'm using a brand new concealer that i'm trying out for the first time testing out for the first time i'll just use it on its own so i want to see what that coverage is going to be like without me having to color correct first go ahead and cover a couple of these blemishes hopefully this won't be too bright and i can have it's like standing out instead of blending in all right that's like blending in pretty well it's not like super overwhelmingly bright the golden warm undertone definitely helps. What are we seeing? Are we seeing, are we seeing coverage? We see the dark circles disappearing. I have dark circles in here and I tend to have a little bit of a shadow in this little area right here. All right, with that first layer, I do not see a lot of coverage. I'm definitely seeing some darkness coming in through here. So I'm, we're gonna try a second layer. I'm gonna focus it right in here. I'm going to kind of let it sit for just a second. Sometimes if you let a concealer sit for about 30 seconds or so and it sets just a little bit, you can get a little bit more coverage. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of let it sit here for just a second before I blend it out, see if we get a little bit more coverage. All right, so it's been sitting for about a minute. Let's go ahead and start blending it out. Definitely seeing a little bit more coverage. All right, that actually looks pretty good. Letting it sit for a minute before I blended it out gave me just a little bit more coverage and it is looking a little bit better so yeah all right so what do you guys think about the complexion so far how is it looking it's looking pretty good i am not seeing any blurring going on like that was one of the claims is that it's supposed to blur don't see any blurring going on but it does look very skin like i will give it that all right so let's go ahead and set everything down with powder so i have the one size ultimate setting powder and translucent it's supposed to be like a soft matte long wearing finish it's supposed to kind of blur the skin and it has a 14 hour claim for wear time so that's interesting asmr that's always satisfying i, I like to take a little bit and tap it into the lid because i feel like it makes it a little bit easier for me to pick up product I'm going to take the flat end of my sponge and dip right into the powder and press it to my face. Oh, I thought I, thought I was smelling like a cookie scent at first, but no, I'm not. Okay, so it definitely has a soft matte finish. I'm going to press them right into my 
pores and see if I see any kind of blurring going on. Mm. That's okay. Not really seeing a whole lot of blurring happening with either the foundation or this powder. I'm going to take the other side of the kind of pointier end of the sponge and I'm going to try pressing this under my eyes. When I did my full face of trying on makeup from Shop Miss A, I used that brightening powder. I did it with a brush and it just wasn't giving me that brightness and coverage like I like to see. So I tried using it with the sponge, just pressing it in and that seemed to work better. So I'm going to try it this way as well. Let's see what we get. I have a difficult time like trying to find a setting powder that won't look all dry and creasy underneath my eyes. Yeah, that is not the best finish under my eyes. It's looking kind of dry. The, the concealer itself is looking a little bit creasy. I also picked up from Tarte their new Tarte C Power Flex Concealer. We're going to be trying this in a different video, but this is another product that I've been wanting to test out. This is like the little mini travel size. Like I said, I love when they come in mini so you can actually test out the product before buying a full size. I do not have a new brow product to try out in this haul, so I'm just going to go off camera. Throw on this one from LA Colors. This is the Eyeliner and Brow Pencil in Dark Brown. This is also in my Project Empties. And then we'll come back and we will try out this Patrick Ta blush duo this is probably the most it's probably what i'm most excited about in this entire haul to save time i'm going to go ahead and throw on my milani eyeshadow primer i also do not have a new eyeshadow primer in this haul and then while this is setting down we can test out this patrick ta blush i have been eyeing patrick ta for so long and i just finally said you know what i'm getting me a freaking blush and i am trying it out so this is the patrick ta for face it is a double take Cream Powder Blush in She's Vibrant. I believe this is one of the shades that was in that palette that he launched. I think it was last year. I was eyeing that when it first came out, but I ended up not getting it. So I was glad to see that he had released the single cream and blushes. But the way that this is made, you have a cream in the top. It's the same shade for both of them. The cream is on the top, the powder is on the bottom, and then there's a little plastic cover that covers the cream parts of the powder and the, and the creams don't get mixed up. I'm going to try the cream one. I'm going to use my AOA Studio F13. I really like this one for cream blushes. So I'm going to dip in to the blush. And then we're just going to slowly start applying that to the cheeks. Quick little check-in with the One Size Beauty Face products. Everything is looking okay, but it's not my favorite finish as of right now but let's go on ahead and test out this blush oh that's pretty it's definitely blending over powder really well i actually want to see what this consistency is like on my finger very creamy it's a kind of a cream balm finish to it just put that on my cheek and then blend it in the sponge the shade is more pink than I was thinking it was. It looks like it's more of a kind of a vibrant orange. At least it's what it looked like when I ordered it, but it's looking more pink in person, but it's really pretty. I might go back and order the other two shades in this. Because I think what he did was he launched all three shades from that palette as singles, if I'm not mistaken. That is blending out beautifully. This is probably my first real official high-end luxury product, not counting the, the Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes I've gotten at a BoxyCharm. And it is not disappointing. That is pretty. It's not lifting, you know, my makeup underneath. I am impressed. I'm going to go ahead and take my sponge and just kind of press it down just a little bit just to make sure the outer edges are blended in. I think I am going to take a little bit of the powder blush and go on ahead and just go over this a little bit. I'm sure that will add to like the wear time throughout the day, kind of set down the cream with the powder. So we have the powder. I'm just going to lightly dust over the cream. Such a pretty formula. Oh, that's nice. Like I said I thought it was more orange, but this is actually going to go really, really well with the blush or the eyeshadow palette and the lippy that I'm going to be using. That definitely brought that color up. Increase the intensity, so we're going to go back over with our sponge. It's a beautiful for you, but you definitely want to kind of go in with a little bit of a light hand so that you're not going too crazy with the pigment right off the bat, but it is looking really pretty. I'm liking it. For highlighter, I'm going to be pulling from the Voss Bubbly Bellini Blush Palette. This is a blush and highlighter palette, and I also got the eyeshadow palette. I ended up with 
two of these and the reason why is because I don't know why but they shipped my shipment into two different packages. The eyeshadow palette was shipped separately from everything else and it has shown that it delivered on Saturday this past Saturday March 18th but it wasn't anywhere to be found so Sunday I called Sephora and they shipped me out a new one and lo and behold two days later the first one showed up so I have another one that's on the way. I think I'm gonna give that one to one of my close friends that I'll be seeing for the first time since the pandemic this coming week. She lives out of town and we're gonna be going to a comic convention together so it will be my first time seeing her in over two years so I'm kind of excited about that. Since I have the Patrick Taw on I'm gonna go ahead and just use the highlighter. This shade is Prosecco which is looks like it's a yellowy gold kind of a shade. Hopefully it's not going to look too gold on the skin. Nice creamy formula. Very smooth. I think this is my first time ever using a Violet Voss like blush highlighter formula. I have used the eyeshadow formula before. The Sakura palette is one of my favorites. Let's go ahead and let me blend. Let's see how it's going to work over this cream powder combination too. Ooh, that is bright. That is bright. It's pretty. That's really, really bright. And it's probably amplified more because I'm applying it over a cream product. I'll use some of the blush shades in this palette in another video. I'm looking forward to trying Peach Puree, which is this beautiful orangey peach tone here. That looks stunning. All right, now to dive into the eyeshadow palette. This is called the Fun Size Rose Party Palette. It's nothing like super exciting as far as the color story. It's kind of like your basic pink with some shimmers and metallics in here. I think this is the smallest Violet Voss palette I've ever had too. It said mini, but I was thinking it was the same size as those smaller ones that come in BoxyCharm. I didn't realize that it actually was a mini palette. And I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dive into, I was going to say shade names, but there are no shade names on here. So I'm going to go with this pink right here. And then we're going to end with this one. But we're going to start off with this kind of a pinky taupe, kind of a setting shade right there and put that all over the lid. I'm going to use kind of the fluffy stubble ended BH Cosmetics brush. Once again, very sad that BH Cosmetics is no longer a thing. Definitely going to miss them. But I'm just going to take this all over the lid, blending right into the crease. This is a really, really good brush for crease work. And I'm just kind of going in circular motions along the brow bone. I really do like Violet Voss's formula. I have decluttered the two that came in my BoxyCharm. I don't know, I just wasn't extremely fond of those formulas. They kind of felt like they were a little bit different. They didn't perform the same way as my Sakura palette. But Violet Voss as a whole, I do like their brand. I do get kind of excited whenever I see that they've launched something new. So lightly into the crease, just kind of blend on the at a corner along that brow bone. Oh, the shadow is blending really, really easily. I think I'm just going to do like a simple look. We're not going to go too crazy with this. I'm going to go into the deepest pink. I was going to go here, but I think I want to go with this one. Might bring this one in, but let's try this one first on that outer corner. I'm going to use my Blend Bunny 4 brush for this. Just tap that on the outer corner. I'm not expecting like a whole lot of super duper depth with this. I mean, this is pretty monochromatic as far as the pinks are concerned. When you think about it, hold on, I'm going to finish that thought in just a minute. Softly blend this into the crease. These shades are blending really, really pretty. That is a pretty shade. It's giving me more depth than I thought I would get from this palette. That is nice. And these brushes help too. The Blend Bunny brushes are absolutely amazing. You know, if I hadn't said that before. Tap that on the other corner. And then just go into the crease and lightly blend. I like to go in circular motions because it helps to focus that shade, that shadow right there on that outer corner. So it's not like going all over the lid. That is pretty. Wow. Hmm. I'm actually kind of impressed. I went on ahead and grabbed my Sakura Blossom palette because I want to see. I want to kind of compare. All right. So this is the bubbly and this is Sakura. I do see some similarities with the shades. The ones in here are a little bit lighter. These have a little bit more richness to them. But this one looks like it would be a pretty decent companion to this one. I'm kind of glad to have them both. I'm not even going to use a brush for these shades. I'm just going to dip right in with my finger and we're going to go in with this brightest pink over here. Oh, and that is bright. That one has very, very creamy metallic to it. I'm just going to press that all over the lid. It's pretty. It's very, very shiny. 
kind of press that over the mats just a little bit too. Usually I like to leave my shimmers in here. But I just kind of want an all over sparkly bubbly shade to go with this rosé party theme we got going on here. I'm not saying anything in this palette that I want to use as an inner corner highlight. So I'm going to go ahead and dip into my Sakura palette. And I'm going to take bubbly this shade right here and put that in the inner corner. That's so funny. Hmm. The shade that I'm picking out of here is called bubbly. <laughs> kind of goes with the whole bubbly rosé theme. We're going to use Blend Bunny number three. I think that's what this is. I'm just going to dip in here and we're just going to blend that into the inner corner. It kind of goes along with that gold highlighter. In fact, I probably could have just used that highlighter as my inner corner. I'm going to go quickly with Blend Bunny 2 and go back into this shade right here and just take that along the lower lash line just to kind of bring in some of that color down below, mainly focusing it on this part of the eye on the outer corner. I love how quickly this look came together. These shadows blended really beautifully. I mean, it's not a revolutionary color story by any means, but it's nice to have like a little smaller, more curated pinky palette that you can pull out for little quick looks. I'm going to line real quick using this eyeliner from Heart Candy. This is part of the Marilyn Monroe collection. This was a friend mail gift, and I'm really loving it. This is my first experience with Heart Candy as far as their eyeliners. I love their foundations and their concealers. This has like a nice kind of a little, I don't know if that's felt or brush, but it's very fine and it goes on really smooth and gives me a nice black line. I'm just going to throw this on really quickly. I'm going to go off camera and throw on some lashes. These are from Ioni. These are the Wispy Natural Flare 3D Meek Lashes, 100% handmade. I got these from Roses, but most of the time I'm able to find Ioni lashes from the Dollar Tree. They're actually very good when you consider the fact that they're a dollar, dollar twenty-five now. But I'm going to throw these on, and then we will come back and I have one more product to try in this haul. Go ahead and wipe away any foundation that I may have on my lips. All right, so the final product that we have to try out, this actually did not come in my Sephora haul. This came from Target. This was a gift from my daughter for my birthday. This is from the Lip Bar, which is a black owned brand. This is the Liquid Matte Lipstick. It's long wearing, it has a hobo oil. The shade is Hot Mama. It's kind of a bright red. This is actually going to go with this look a little bit more than if I thought this blush was orangey. And there is an orangey blush, I think. I may go back and get it because I really am liking the way that my cheeks are looking right now. They look really, really nice. I'm going to line my lips using this liner from ColourPop. This is one of the lippy pencils. It is in Come We Fly. This is part of that very first Hocus Pocus collection. But the shade should match this pretty well. So we're going to go ahead and line our lips quickly. All right, now to give this lippy a try. I really love the packaging. I said I was pretty excited when my daughter gave me this. I have been wanting to try the lip bar for some time now. I think these were like $14.99 retail. There's no fragrance. It says it has a hobo, so I'm interested in seeing how it feels on the lips. Texture is kind of thin. Feels more liquidy than it does creamy. It's very opaque, though. I do like the shade. I'm really liking this doe foot. I don't know if you can see it, but it has like a nice little fat angle to it. Really helping to get the color on really nicely. That feels really nice. It's really comfortable. It's dried down, but it's not like dry and crackling lips. It feels really comfortable. And I love the way that the shade looks. It's such a pretty deep, rich, intense red. Oh, I am loving that. I may have to pick up some more of these. This is nice. All right, guys, so that is the end of my Sephora birthday haul try on. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Have you tried any of these products yourself? Did they work for you? I will say that the longer these base products have been sitting on my skin, the better they look. Like, they've kind of warmed up to my skin now and kind of melted in with my skin. The Beauty Balm and the powder is looking a lot nicer. The concealer is actually looking a lot better now. Definitely going to keep playing around with them. Let you guys know what I think about them um, in a future video once I've you know, had a chance to try them and test them out a little bit more. But overall, I love how this look came out. This Patrick Ta Cream Powder Blush this is so beautiful. This is absolutely stunning. Like I said, I think I'm going to go back and at least try to get one more shade, like the, the more orangey red tone. 
because this is a beautiful formula. This eyeshadow palette was really pretty too. I mean, it's not like the most revolutionary color story that I've ever seen. You know, we've seen colors like this before, but the formula blended beautifully. I had absolutely no problem. I love how I was able to just put together this really quick, sparkly, bubbly pink look. Let's see, was there anything else? And then the lip product. This was really, really beautiful. I'm loving how it feels. I'm gonna do a quick little kiss test. Just the tiniest bit of transfer, but not, but really nothing at all. And it feels so comfortable. I'm gonna move my lips around. It's not crackly or drying or anything. This is beautiful. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, I'm very, very happy with how this look ultimately came out. If you like these types of videos, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. It really does help with my channel. If you are new to my channel and you're not already subscribed, I would love it if you would consider joining my family and hitting subscribe. And make sure you turn on the notification bell so you get notified of any videos coming up in the future. Also, be sure to follow me on my other socials. I am on TikTok, Instagram. Be safe, take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next one.